how does um, a, uh, a modern children's librarian in Milpitas get involved with a song from the 50s uh, about a ladybug? Mm, how did that happen? That's quite the story, actually. One night I was sitting at the reference desk, just minding my own business, doing my job, when I was approached by a young man who has now since become a friend of mine. His name is Preston. And uh, we started talking about music. And it just so happens that Preston particularly adored this song, The Lucky Ladybug, as sung by Billy and Lily. And Preston also was interested in working with children and incorporating a song into story, the story time. He really wanted me to try it. And, and after I listened to it, I thought it might be kind of fun. And so that's what we did. We started playing The Lucky Ladybug in the family story time at Milpitas Library on Tuesday night. And the children would dance with us to the song. Uh, once we found how um, children responded to the song and we decided to, to tape, do a taping and see if we can think more deeply about this and present something for the community at large to see and to, under, and to maybe to experience. The, we also conducted a, an art program, a ladybug art, where the children came in and they listened to the song, they danced the song, and then they um, made their art projects. They painted ladybugs, they glued ladybugs, they cut out ladybugs. And um, so they had this overall experience from the story and the, the music and into the art and, the, and the, ta the tangible part of creation, creation. So those children get the sense of what the library is and it becomes part of who they are for their whole life. And essentially what happened is it became such a delightful experience that we came up with the idea of wouldn't it be neat to record this and uh, as a historical, as a cultural, as uh, showing what libraries are doing today and what uh, children learn in story time, not, of, well, of course, traditionally with stories, but all sorts of aspects of what story time brings into their lives. So what, what are the sorts of things? I mean, you, you've mentioned a little bit about cultural literacy and how story time's involved in that. What other sorts of functions does story time accomplish? Well, of course, for our story times, for the very youngest children, um, it, it oftentimes, story time is a child's very first experience in a social, social gathering situation where you have to behave in a certain manner. Um, because you have to learn about listening, you have to learn about sitting, uh, learn about participating in a positive way. And not every child was going to come born with those abilities, of course. And so they learn about being in a group. They learn about what it is to, to, to start learning in that group situation. Um, and they also start building up their um, their background of information. They, simple songs like Farmer in the Dell, you know, that becomes in, incorporated into their, uh, their sphere of knowing. And then there's the parents. Uh, oftentimes the parents that we have are very, they're either young parents that haven't had the kind of experience working with young children in a group environment. They may be immigrants who culturally and linguistically uh, have situations where they, they could need the support in finding out more about gathering places and about reading to their children and about what, mo what they can learn by watching, watching the librarian who is modeling um, these kinds of activities like the reading and the, the finger plays and the songs. And also it's about how they, I really emphasize with my, with my parents, how important they are as a model for their child. If a child's coming into story time and they don't know about sitting still, they watch their parents. And if a parent is modeling the kind of listening that they want their child to do, then the children will learn from that. And consequently, if a parent does not pay attention and a parent talks to their neighbor or a parent reads something else, the child is watching that as well. And they're gauging, about, they're gauging by their parents' behavior how important something is. 
Uh, and so that's why it's, it's, a, it's the whole um, gamut from small children in and of themselves learning within the social environment to parents as well learning about social environment and working, learning about literature and learning about our culture. One of the things that made the song stand out to me was just the idea of um, the ladybug being so central to it and uh, how, what, a, what a happy image that is for children. Mm -hmm. And I think children respond to that sort of brightness and, I don't know, the, there's a sense of joy to it that sort of taps into something that seems particularly suited for kids. And, um, Lucky ladybugs. Who doesn't love a, la a ladybug, right? Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Who doesn't love a it ladybug? It lands on your hand, right? It's good luck. And and it kind of tickles your hand when it lands there. And you feel like you've gotten a gift when a ladybug comes to you. Yeah. Guess I'll ask the star above me when the moon is bright canary yellow It'll really be amazing if the crystal ball gaze and says I'll always be your steady fellow Ladybug, silver dollar rabbit's foot With a four-leaf clover and a horseshoe Wishbone, shamrocks, gummy shook Singing abracadabra in a cat's eye Throw your wishes to the sea With a four-leaf clover and a horseshoe Wishbone, shamrock, scummy shook Singing abracadabra in a cat's eye Making moon talking bobbin like a firefly squishing and a splashing. Ladybug, silver dollar rabbit's foot with a four leaf clover and a horseshoe. Wishbone, shamrocks, got me shook. Singing ever to death.